people bless the Lord everybody everybody bless the Lord good to be here one more time to share the word of God with you come on hallelujah start stand praise God you're gonna acknowledge your father and get into the word tonight so you get in the word and the Christ kingdom studies amen praise God thank you for being here and for those who are joining us online thank you for taking the time out to connect with us to get the word in your spirit praise God I believe as you extend your faith tonight God will touch you in a deep way and help you to access great revelation of his power and demonstration of his spirit in your life amen praise God hallelujah come on slip those hands and let's just acknowledge your heavenly father father we just thank you for this occasion to be here we know if it had not been for you hallelujah this would not be possible there is no us without you you're the one who makes this meaningful and effective as we lean not to our own understanding and trust you for guidance and for leadership oh god you lead us into deeper and uh, the truth and revelation of your presence and will for our lives oh god and so we pray right now that every thought and imagination feeling and view that exalt itself against the knowledge will be brought into captivity to obedience to you right now that grace will be released to your people to understand for without your grace without your anointing we cannot understand these things but your holy spirit that you've given to us oh god gives us deep understanding leads us into all truth that we will know the truth and the truth will set us free and bear fruit and much fruit and fruit that remains so we thank you and give you the praise and the glory as we claim the victory right now in jesus name amen and amen praise god thank you all for coming praise god you may be seated and those who join us online come on let's get your notebook and your pen and call your friends and tell them it's time to get into the word of god amen the gospel of the kingdom is the gospel that jesus preached we have put out a book on that you need to encourage others to get in on the gospel that jesus preached because there's many nuggets of truth in it jesus uh speak the every parable he spoke every time he spoke the gospel of the kingdom he spoke it in parables and he gave the reason for this hallelujah in matthew chapter 13 as the disciples asked him why do you speak to the people in parables why do you what speak to them in parables the disciples of course they further investigated what these parables mean when they heard them but they knew it was jesus wasn't giving farming tips and and talking about uh people and stewards and and about the vine and old vine and old wine skin it was more using types and figures to demonstrate and illustrate a, a story and there are hidden truths in those story amen praise god and the disciples of course knew that jesus was intentionally stating it this way uh, hallelujah and so they of course asked him it is matthew chapter 13 verse 10 the disciples came and said to him why do you speak to them why do you speak to them not to us they said they didn't say to us why do you speak to us but he said why do you speak to them in parables hallelujah why do you what speak to them in parables and he answered and said to them and that's to his disciples there not to mix up to them <laughs> he says because it is it has been given to you talking to his disciples you his disciples to to know the mysteries are the hidden truths of the kingdom of heaven but he says to them that's to those who are just stand buyers and and those who are just viewers and observers who come to view of to see miracles and to just see what this man is about but not really interested in true discipleship hallelujah and so those he says it's not for them come on it has not been given and there's a very powerful statement he made in verse 12 he says whoever has to him more will be given and he will have what abundance but whoever does not have even what he has 
will be taken from him come on now whoever what has even what he has who so i know many persons look at this and say the rich will get rich and the poor will get poor and it, it, it bears some truth in it if you understand who is really the rich and who is really the poor <laughs> yeah, remember the, the way that the lord states the word of how people are in terms of how god views them is different from how the world views them huh and so you have to know really what it means that's why we say it's spoken as a parable but he said it's as spoken as a parable to them because it's not given to them to know the hidden secrets are the truths of the kingdom of god he says no but it's to you those hidden truths will be revealed amen for he says whoever has to him more will be given and it was whoever has the hidden truths are the mysteries of the kingdom hallelujah more will be given to them because you know? if they really know the powerful nature of the gospel that jesus is preaching and how that is really transforming their life they will never set settle with little and we see a lot of people settling with little so we realize that they really don't know the word of the message and many have even thought that uh, read the parable and start to interpret it their way rather than how jesus stated it but we need to go back to what jesus said to get the fullness theory it says whoever has to him more will be given whoever has to him what more so what has what what is the, they have huh right the mystery of the kingdom he says more will be given to those who have but those who what does not have even what he has his possessions he says will be taken from him and that is in line of the of the the the, the opposition being present to ensure that happens and we know who is the opposition right the adversary satan and he says he going about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and of course he's not here to do us any good hello somebody and, and so anyone who really understand this gospel that jesus preached now will never settle for just a little bit and say well i just want a little bit just to make sure it has got you i don't really need anymore no because you see all those who jesus spoke about that came into contact with this message and really knew its worth jesus description about them was that they gave all they had to possess it they what they gave what all they had to possess it come on now hello and and we see that in what is described about the the, the 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 what was it it was the talk about the point where he found the lost kind and the man with the with the with the field that he found that was filled with treasure and sold all he had and the one with the spoke about the pearl so there are several parables on it we can highlight tonight just to give you the valuable pearl is in 45 to 46 in the same matthew 13 hallelujah he, he spoke about that pearl hallelujah and he also talked about the hidden treasure in verse 44 hallelujah yes, from 44 to 47 basically covers it there he says the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field notice he said the kingdom of heaven is like the treasure now i heard one uh, noted preacher lady was preaching on a program and saying that you are the treasure that god jesus left heaven for to come and get and so <laughs> of course she don't understand the parable right but it, it is stating clearly that it is not with the treasure <laughs> you need to understand this clearly he says the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field hidden in a field which a man found the man found that treasure 
he did not feel and for joy over it goes and do what sells all that he has and buys that field we know that's not what jesus did he didn't sell all he had to buy us but you know persons will talk that because they make persons feel very important you know that's what jesus did for us oh oh, oh you see how important we are uh, yeah but it's not important is not about us it's about the kingdom notice the message watch this it says for joy over it joy over what it the treasure he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field he buys the field but is not the field he's selling all he have to buy is the treasure that's in the field i want to take note of that because if you make those distinction i think it will help you to see it a little bit clear and it says next one it says kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls he's seeking beautiful pearls and that number and about he says who well, when he had found one pearl of great price is not many beautiful pearls he found as he was looking for many but he found one and that one that he found was a good notice in this occasion the, the merchant is looking for many he's seeking many beautiful pearls but only finds one of great price and went and sold all he had to possess the one you got to pay attention to that amen so this again is not focusing on what jesus did for us it's focusing on what people should do to obtain the kingdom and watch watch this again he says again the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet he's talking about the kingdom now and the separation of the persons that are drawn in and the kingdom of God here in verse 47 is being described as being um, choosy over what kind it takes in. It's not taking in any and any and all kind, as many will say it. You know, look at this in verse 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind. It would seem from that initial part that it's saying it it receives everybody of every kind can come in the kingdom but when you read further in that in that part you realize that that's not how it end up he didn't receive every kind <laughs> he says when it was full it was it, they drew to shore sat down gathered the good into the vessel and threw the bad away did not take every kind at all he's looking for a certain kind ah and he says so it will be at the end of the age the angels will come forth separate what the wicked from among the just now if you say all of us are sinners and all of us are wicked then where is this separation coming up separating the wicked from the just he got nothing to do with you man it's just because god love you and we hear those kind of messages passing on as the gospel you got you can do nothing it's just god alone just chooses us to just save you you know and but the, the, then why would there be a separation and and why would they, they be classified different as the wicked from the just if all is the same how does then some become wicked and some declared as just come on we, 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 we got to look into some things that we, we preaching and, and hear people preaching today and calling us because it is quite inclusive of everybody and and that kind of inclusion gospel that they preach you know that everybody's in it man you know the kind of appeal to the world and it will draw a big crowd and will gain a lot of smiles and approval from the world but check what jesus said you'll find that it's not there hmm? 
hallelujah so he, he did speak about those hidden treasure and you know the 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 the, the, the pearl hallelujah that this man found and the valuable pearl and talking about the dragnet huh and talking about the 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 the, the lost sheep the lost sheep that is in matthew 18 verse 12 to 14. matthew 18 verse 12 to 14 he was speaking about that say what do you think if a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray does he not leave the 99 and go to the mountains to seek that one that is trained if he should find it as surely i say to you he rejoices over that one sheep than over the 99 that did not go astray even so it is not the will of the father who is in heaven that one of these what no 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 if you think one of these little one is everybody then you you would say then then god missed it man some that he will not to perish he's still perishing you know he's missing but but he said uh uh one of these little ones he's talking about those who are his sheep and we know from parable that he gave he, he state two different kinds of people in the crowd sheep and goats ah uh, again a distinction between two different kinds of animals representing two different kinds of people and so if you go across in there no we are all the same god love us all and we of course he loves us all and of course christ came and died for all of our sins but all did not embrace this truth and there's a reason why you embrace it and others have not and you embracing the truth is what made the difference for you and their rejection of the truth is what made them remain in that state and got wax worse and worse in that state so if you say then it has nothing to do with us then all of us could be saved without us doing nothing but it is sure that the response of one was different from the other why they are placed in different categories and stated as different persons compared to the other and so to say that it's all up to god and you know god loves us so much and he's gonna save us because he loves us is that really the gospel no it's not the gospel so it, it appeals to the world because a lot of worldians as they would call them um would be glad to hear any christian say you know we are just like you there's no difference uh, but it is not true it will appeal to them to feel better about themselves and probably even better about you including yourself with them in their level but you need to make it clear and honestly declare to them that the state you are in having been in christ is totally different from the state you are in being outside of christ and that state either for salvation or condemnation but is not the same thing and the kingdom of god is declaring god's means of governance and everything that opposes his means of governance will be removed from his kingdom come on everything now everything that god made is under his rule come on but he said that he will remove ah, look at this one look at this one first before we go to the next it says in matthew 25 verse 32 to 33 it says all the nations will be gathered together before him and he will separate them from one another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats he's not saying the goat size what he says he's dividing the sheep from the goats and he will set the sheep on his right but the goats on the left and if you check through the the study of scriptures those who are placed on the left was not placed there for favor was placed there for judgment and condemnation 
and those were placed on the right were placed for favor and it was ex it is always if you look through all the years that he says you will see that consistent with what jesus teach amen and so he's, he's revealing something to you here that we need to look into huh praise god he, he said the king will say to those on the right hand come you blessed of my father inherit what the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world he says a kingdom is prepared for you and it's time now for you to inherit it come on now somebody huh and, and he gives a reason for i was hungry and you i was hungry and you you gave me food i was thirsty and you gave me drink i was a stranger and you took me in i was naked and you clothed me i was sick you visited me i was in prison and you came to me uh, hallelujah no no Th does that sound like he's saying to them well you know it's because i love your savior is nothing good you do you heard that message as the gospel though it's nothing good you do that make you say is that what jesus is saying here or is he saying because you did this welcome come into what inherit the kingdom the father has prepared for you you see that no huh. that don't sound like the gospel we are hearing today not at all and he says for i was hungry at you gave me food i was thirsty and you gave me a drink i was a stranger and you took me in i was naked and you clothed me i was sick you visited me i was in prison you came to me and follow part of the scripture here and see what the, the righteous will answer him saying he didn't say the wicked answer him saying he says the righteous answer him saying lord when did you we see you hungry In other words, they are unaware of when they did that for the Lord. They are the righteous, but they are unaware of they doing that for the Lord. Listen to me, God. You need to pay attention to it. He says, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty? give you to drink when did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you ah huh? come on now and the king will answer and say to them what as surely i say to you in as much as you did it to what least are these who because that is the key now least of these who who is the brethren okay you see it's not just going to any cinnamon and the world and just say I, I did it for them I go uh -huh. hello you need to understand who is the least uh, and when he says the least least of whose brethren his brethren and we know he says his brethren his brothers and sisters are those who do the will of his father in other words they are of the household of faith ah jesus come on he says you did it to me when you did it for these come on hello when you did it for these you did it for me then he will also say to those on the which side the left side depart from me see the left side is treated differently than those on the right side and he says then uh, depart from me you cursed into 
everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels for i was hungry and you gave me no food i was thirsty you gave me no drink ah, i was a stranger you did not take me in naked you did not clothe me sick and in prison and you did not visit me then they will also answer him saying lord when did we see you hungry or thirsty or strange or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you and they were saying if we knew it was you anyway we would do it man come on now because jesus is not here man what he is not here only we here jesus is not here man what jesus why answer them you know? He says, then he will answer them saying, as surely I say to you, in as much you did it to what? One of the least of these. Now, when he's saying these, they're, 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 it was clear to them he's speaking about his brethren. And his brethren, as called sheep or wheat, is placed on his right and he's judging those on the left. Tell them what you did to the least of these. That's what you did to me. What you didn't do for them, you didn't do it for me. And they will go away into everlasting punishment. But the, or the righteous into. Ah, same thing as everlasting life eternal life oh, what we wanted to, to watch this you know because this this is saying something that that many don't want to declare because they they are trying to save person's feelings and while trying to save their feelings souls are perishing souls are perishing because they have been given a band-aid to cover a deep wound Huh? They have been given a band-aid to what? Cover the wound. It's like somebody dying in him. Say, it's all right, man. Everything is going to be all right. Don't worry. You're doing fine. <laughs> and the person there say, okay, I'm doing fine. And they're dying. Come on now. Huh? He says, these will go away into everlasting punishment. And that will be shocking to them because they thought they were doing fine. But this judgment, they proved them wrong. That it was not fine. You have to be careful what doctrine you listen to. What kind of teaching you agree with because it's going to influence your behavior and it's going to influence your communication and it's going to influence how you think and how you think and your talk and your behave is what forms and, and carves your character and it will either qualify or disqualify you from the kingdom come on somebody I wanted to pay attention to this because Jesus is drawing a line in the sun and showing through his teaching everybody is not in the same boat. He's showing, hey, there's the sheep and there are the goats. Huh? Notice that because we, we don't have that distinctive, much of those distinctive teachings going on now. It's like everybody, we are all one, we are all one big family, we are all serving God the way, the way we know how. And everybody is going to God some way. Everybody is doing their best, everybody have a little of God in them. And a little of the devil. A little good and a little evil. None of us is perfect. And all these teachings that they give that sound good to the carnal ear, but is it lined up with what the word of God is saying? Does it line up what Jesus was teaching? Because if Jesus was teaching that I can tell you, he would have a lot more friends 
and friendship from the world but he says because he condemned the world the sins and exposes the sins of the world then that's why the world hates him he didn't do them wrong but he's identifying and exposing that what they're doing is wrong and that was something that even Jesus' brothers who did not believe on him he of course was saying to them the world loves you but they don't love me you can go anywhere with them and they are right man but when i come along the, the atmosphere shift watch this what jesus was saying here in saint john 7 even of his brothers so jesus had brothers because mary had other children after having jesus and so these grew up as brothers uh, to jesus in the flesh but they were not they were not believers because they didn't believe he was the christ they, of course then they have their own version in their mind our opinions that they have about his coming about as something fishy went on with mom and somehow they find this this um, excuse to say god did it uh-huh hello somebody so the brothers did not believe in him it says it in saint john 7 verse 5 saint john 7 verse 5 to 8 he says then for even his brothers did not believe in him whose brothers jesus's brothers he says then jesus said to them my time has not yet come but your time is always ready ah uh, your time is what in other words the world always welcome you but they don't always welcome me and he gives the reason why don't they welcome him he said the world cannot hate you if the world cannot hate his brothers why do they hate him it is stated there he says but it hates me because I testify of it that its works are evil you see you can have any amount of friendship with the world if you don't tell them their works are evil and many of those called today new Christians have a lot of worldly friends that they don't tell that their works are evil it would not be friendly they say it would not be nice to keep on exposing and speaking about the things they do we just got to learn to get along together uh, obviously jesus did not learn that lesson or uh, that wasn't a lesson that jesus was teaching because i think these new bread new age teachers are bringing up some new bread believers that are not really believers at all but bearing the name watch this because jesus says he couldn't go as he chose to these major religious function and it's a religious function it's not a function for rome though they are under rome's rulership is a function for jews religious jews and he's saying you can go up to the feast quickly anytime but i can't go up there come on he said you go up to the feast i am not yet going up to the feast for my time has not yet fully come in other words you know though it's a religious feast that all jews that love the lord must gather to celebrate and honor the lord he's saying they are gathering there but my coming there could mean death for me from who the same ones gathering to honor the lord in the feast this wasn't Roman that Jesus was speaking about. He can't go to their function. 
This was Jews. Ah. It's like the, the religious church having a major function and you hear they say, they know, Pastor, you're not going to be there. I say, eh, you can't go there. No. You, can't, you have to socialize with other believers. You have to go there. But you see, once I go there, no. I know, I know, I know, I know. Me and my big mouth. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because you, you can't know truth and become a silent partner when people are speaking lies around you. There is something in you that stirs you up to answer and to confront what is being staged as truth when you know it is lies. And there's a passion for those who are truly born of God that they cannot allow any form of lies to be paraded as truth in their midst and remain silent. Hallelujah. We saw that early from Paul who wasn't around in the time when Jesus was here walking the earth but um, he came some 30 years after Jesus ascended when the church in the early embryonic stage was being persecuted uh, and Peter for much part was there ministering to the people hallelujah but now this Saul was now turned to Paul to his conversion and he wrote, wrote a testimony about it it's in Galatians chapter 1 her testimony of how he was converted from Judaism to Christ. Not from Judaism to Christianity as we call it today. Because we call it Judeo-Christian faith. That was not what Paul was preaching. Paul wasn't preaching a mixture of his religion with Christ. He said he's preaching Christ and him alone. And I want to get in that because I want you to understand that this is some deep. You look in Galatians chapter 1. Back up to that and look on Paul defending his calling. Let's go up a little further to about 6 or 5. Hallelujah. In Galatians 1. Hallelujah. Ah, yes. Praise God. Yes, verse 6. He says, I marvel that you are what? Turning so soon from him. From what? No, he's not turning from it. He's not turning from a religion. What Paul said, what Paul says, turning from him, a person. Who is this person? All right, he said, who called you in the grace of Christ. He says, God called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel now you are turning to. He says, I marvel that you are turning from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. He says, which is not another. So he said, though he call it different gospel, he says, it's not really a different gospel. Because what he's saying, there's one gospel. Watch this thing. He says, it's not really. Because he says, there are some who trouble you and want to what? Pervert the gospel. In other words, they want to mix their religion into this thing. And the gospel is not a religious message. I want you to understand this clearly. There's a, there's a worldview that think anything regarding God is religious. And I want to break down that worldview and let you understand. Religion was never God's plan from the beginning. You better understand that one. And religion was only introduced in a time when man had been severed from God and steps were being taken to put man into a position to understand the need for reconciliation. Because you see, it's hard to sell you a product where you don't see the need of it. 
and so all the laws and the statutes and the precepts and all these things he says they thought it was given to them to to declare them righteous but paul declared later said no it was actually given to you to condemn the whole world in sin it wasn't given for salvation it was given for condemnation to let you see how sinful sin is and the penalty that follow from God and those who do such things. Come on now. So, so he says, he, 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 it's but there are some, he says, who are now mixing that into what the gospel of Christ is about. And he says, Paul makes it clear here, but if we, that he hears so is including himself, if we are what? An angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than we have preached to you let him be accursed come on and paul repeats that in the following verse hallelujah yes praise god he said as we have said before so now i say again if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received let him be a curse and this is where defense is calling he says for do i now persuade men or god and he says is he trying to impress men or is he doing what is pleasing to god he says do i seek to please men for if i still please men I would not be a bond servant of Christ. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. Take note of that. The gospel which was preached by me is not according to man in other words man didn't sit down and pen this thing together and say no this is what we're gonna preach to the people this wasn't put together by well witty savvy you know theological scholars that just have a lot of wealth of knowledge in scriptures he said ah uh -uh. Check out this thing. He says, this came by revelation. Huh? He says, I did not receive it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through what? Christ revealed it to him. Christ revealed himself, and Christ spoke to Paul. Huh? And he says, for you have heard of my... That's he's giving his testimony now. I heard of my former conduct in what? That's the Jews' religion. If he say former conduct is not in it anymore. Former is his past lifestyle and practice in that religion. But he says that's former. And those times I persecuted the church of God. Beyond measure I tried to destroy it. No. That was what he did through that religion. You know? Remember, it's that same religion that was there that said to Pilate, crucify him. When Pilate asks and appeal to them, what have this man done wrong that is worthy of death? They still declared crucify him now Pilate appealed to their morals of their religion since they are saying they are more religious than Pilate is as an official stated over them he is now judging their morality to say let me put somebody who everyone around town know that he do wrong and this one is Barabbas who is known as a murderer and a thief and has done some dangerous things that now he's incarcerated for 
and they say no one must be released so who out of the two of these men should be released and they say release Barabbas come on somebody where is the morals here is the morality that that should guide their decision was that coming from their religion the same religion they say in Christianity birth out of does evil produce good I'm asking you because you need to pay attention to this that Paul didn't say move from Judaism to Christianity come on watch the thing he says I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation how could he advance in Judaism while he's persecuting the church of God if the church of God is just under that religious place a religious organized body that is birthed out of Judaism as well as the same people how would it be that he says out of Judaism is persecuting the church and is advancing in Judaism because of it look at verse 14 I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my fathers come on come on these traditions that they had he thought that he was guarding these traditions he had from his religion and they believe this religion was given to them by God oh my God come on now. but God never gave them the law for religion hallelujah God gave them the law that they would see how sinful sin is and the penalty that awaits those who practice such things that they would cry out for salvation hence the law would point them to Christ hello so it's not about religion I want somebody to get it tonight but look what Paul said in verse 15 when it pleased God who oh what separated me from my mother's womb and called me to his grace when he said call me to his grace he's talking about at the point of his conversion that's where he received the calling he never received the calling when he was born from his mother's womb he's talking about the point he's talking about the point when he was born again look at it, it says i receive it he called me through his grace to reveal his son where in me come on the son was not in him when he was persecuting the church see he was pretty much zealous about his religion but it was nothing to this christ this jesus being the christ he believed that someone else is the christ but not this jesus as he was told by the fathers the elders in his religion and so he says now god revealed his son in him that i might preach who preach him him who christ the one who's in him so he's not preaching christianity the thing that they made system of beliefs and views that they now tailor through and 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 stamp and seal as what is christianity that's not really what christ came christ didn't come for us to move from one religion to another religion religion does not save but he's calling everyone no matter what the religion they're in to come in a saving knowledge of him and of the inheritance that is laid up for them in him 
hello somebody which is the kingdom come on now so he says to reveal his son in me that i might preach him among the gentiles i did not immediately confer with flesh and blood nor did i go up to jerusalem to those who are apostles before me now that would be the general religious thing to do you call as an apostle you better go check the apostles that were apostles before you and let them approve let them pray and fast and get the word say you really get called for that otherwise you're not moving uh, paul didn't get that idea at all and it was clearly stated in what he says nor did i go up to jerusalem to those who were apostles before me but i went to arabia and returned again to damascus come on now yeah more then after three years all those time was preaching you know he's not going up to the arabian to the place to sit down and look and meditate no he's up there preaching all those years he's been up there then after three years he say i went up to jerusalem to see who no he don't go up there to see all the apostles you know he say i went to see peter there's a connection with him going to see peter because peter had that initial call to bring this to the gentiles you know unlike many of the other apostles peter got that vision and that word you know and lord tell him to kill and eat and he said i will not eat and the lord was showing him said gentiles will be brought into this thing will be brought into the new faith and they must have no faith in christ is not in the religion watch the thing and after three years went up to jerusalem see peter remain with him 15 days but i saw none of the other apostles except james the lord's brother now concerning the things which i write to you indeed before god i do not lie and then chapter 2 paul states clearly said you know all things running well you know until you know peter was there with him to oversee the work because Peter is then seeing something being done that he was called to do in that year, but hesitant to step out to do it. And God raised up this young man now to step out boldly and do the thing. And Peter, of course, is looking at the work and saying, My, he's just looking at the wonders of God working, bringing the Gentiles in. Come on now. But he himself. Uh, slipped in the midst there with some other belief and view showing up that of course was perverting what was being done there by paul and paul didn't spare words to come out and show clearly that he's not putting up with that not for a minute come on somebody you see that is in the, that's in, in Gal galatians 2 verse 11 when peter had come to antioch hallelujah I mean, it was Antioch. he said they were first called christians and he said i withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed for before certain men came from james he would eat with the gentiles but when they came he withdrew and separated himself fearing those who were of the circumcision and it has to do with religion right there and the rest of the jews also what played the hypocrite with him so that even barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy come on somebody you seeing it but when i saw that what they were not straightforward about what the truth of the gospel that was the earlier stage of perversion trying to creep into the gospel and paul said even though it's peter that the lord spoke highly of and is recorded in the gospel of what christ spoke about him and paul said i don't care who he is when it comes to the gospel he's going to defend it to the t and she said that's not the gospel is not the jewish religion mixing into this with christ come on somebody 
somebody need to understand this why this became an issue for Paul that he would speak so openly rebuking Peter before the congregation there and others that joined him he says but when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel I said to Peter before them all not privately before them all if you be not Jew live in the manner of Gentiles and not as the Jew why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews in other words when you withdraw aren't you saying then you as a Jew have a better salvation than the Gentiles come on you know that that is still being stated today and that's why people say you know we got to send things abroad to Israel because we, <laughs> we got to send things abroad to Israel because remember they are God's people and if you do it for them then God will bless you will you get that from did Jesus tell you that did Jesus preach that as part of the gospel and where did these preachers now get this revelation from? Come on now. Paul did not affirm that kind of behavior that they are showing that Jews who are Christians are somehow much more favored than Gentiles. And if you do something for them, some blessing is going to reach you than if you do it for another Gentile believer not so and this was what Paul was saying no I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel I said to Peter before them all if you being a Jew lived in the manner of Gentiles you were living here just like Gentiles you wasn't living here like a Jew and you was well saved with them until you see some Jew come down then they want to show some distinction. Come on now. Have yourself amongst them. As a Jew. Like you have some right of righteousness better than they do. He says no. Not. Why are you compelling them to live as you know? We, he says, including himself with, with, with Peter. He says we who are Jews by nature and through the flesh. And not sinners of the Gentiles, not we are not uncircumcised as they were before. He says, we, knowing that a man is not justified by what? In a, it, those laws is what they made the religion of. And he says, the law was not given to justify you, it was not given to make you righteous. It was actually given to point out your sin and to show the condemnation that will follow to those who practice such things. So it wasn't offering salvation. So even when they used it as a religion, it still goes to prove that religion does not save. He says, so Paul is saying, had this been enough, Christ would not need to come and die for the sins of men. Come on. Christ is not a minister of sin. He's a minister of righteousness. Come on now. So he says, hey, you're not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in so he says, both Jew and Gentile is made righteous by their faith in Christ, not in Christianity. Their faith in Christ. Uh, okay, some of you say, what's the difference? I trust in the religion of Christianity because it is about Christ. Trusting things about Christ is not the same thing as trusting Christ. Christ you can trust things about me and still don't trust me I 
And so that's what Paul is saying. We didn't get this because of the things about him. The lamb that was sacrificed under the law was still representing him. But he says that representation did not bring full coverage for us to enter the Holy of Holies. Only the high priest could go on our behalf. We couldn't go in there. And the high priest only could go in there one time out of a year. So when did we ever get to go into the holies of holies? No time under the law. Only the high priest would go once out of a year. So my God, if that high priest serve as a high priest 20 years, you go 20 times out time in life. 20 days. Come on now. Huh? Come on, man. That, that's, that, you see what I'm saying? So, so even scripture teaches us that he says that was signifying that our way into the holies of holies was not yet made. So even under the, the, the types that they was using as the, the animal that they were using to say this is sacrifice for our sin, that still couldn't pay the price for their sin. It was only used as a as a as a as an illustration to something that would come. And now Christ come. And they say it's not him. Hello. <laughs> you, you get it. <laughs> so that, that's why I said they were all busy saying that they are in for it, but they, they, they were using animal. And how can animal pay for the sin of man when it's not animal sin? Man sin, and is a man need to die. I can't kill your brother and, and then go to the court and say, Dear Your Honor, bring my goat for this brother's, for this person's dead brother that I kill. And, and they can kill this goat and we'll be even today. Come on now, somebody. That would mean no sense. That would not be justice. You see, it, it, if, if a man sin, a man would have to die. And, and so all those blood sacrifices of goats and ox and rams could not really atone for sin. It was still pointing to Christ who would atone for their sin. Got it? Hello. There it is in Hebrews 10, verse 4 to 5. He says, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. It is not possible that the blood of goats. Bulls and goats could take away sin. He says, therefore, when he came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire. So where all this sacrifice and offering come from? With the blood of bull and goats. And he said, you never desire it. Religion. Come on. But a body you have prepared for me. Hallelujah. You prepared a body for me to come and accomplish this task. Set the record straight. Get back things in line. Restore what was lost. Come on, somebody. Bring to life what was made dead. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. And he says that you, this is something Ah, God. Revolutionary being done by God that is bringing man into a whole new state of being. It's more than just saying, I forgive you. Come on. It's more than just saying, I forgive you. You have to look at the whole thing. Of what is done here? Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
and know that he's giving his life to you. He is what? Giving his life to you. Glory to God. Don't you see? We are all slated still to die. We are all slated still to die. So since Jesus died, what happened? Nobody will believe in the Lord. I've never died. Of course they still die. Come on. Because it is still slated for us to die. But so what did we get out of the deal then if we still die? You see? Eternal life. That's right. Girl. You got it. In other words, he is giving to us his life that this, this, in spite of what the word of God is saying, the soul that sin it shall surely die. And God can't take back the word. You did sin, so you must die. And God not taking back that word, you know. So that word is not taken back, so you still tears of death. But he coming and tears of death for you is, all, is releasing a new life to you that your death is not the end of it. Oh God. Come on somebody. But he's giving you a new life. And this life is called what? Ah, oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's the God kind of life. Come on, somebody. So he came and experienced human life to give to you the God kind of life. And he said, you can't work for this gift. Ah, hallelujah. You can't work for it. But if you believe it, you can put it to work. Hallelujah. <laughs> it will demonstrate its characteristics in you as one who is truly born of God. Hallelujah. Partakers of his divine nature. Glory to God. It is a gift. Hallelujah. But the gift is of no use to you if you don't put it to work. It's not a gift we put on the shelf and say I got it. Come on, somebody. Or oh, somebody give you, if you are in deep debt and, and great financial embarrassment and restraint, and somebody put a million dollars in your account, if you don't spend a dollar from that, you're still in the same debt, you know. Not no change for you. You, you, you. They would say you're a rich poor man. Because your bank account is saying you're rich, but you're living very poor. Huh? Because it, it, the gift is of no benefit to you if it's not put to use. And many don't see how it can be put to use now. Because they say we're going to die anyway, so we're going to put it to use. Oh, we're going to put it to use. We have to wait till after we die to get it. But the Lord said, no, you got it right now. Those who have Christ have that life. Ah, Jesus. He said that in First John 5, verse 9 to 13. We give that several times, but we give it again and again. For those who will join us online or have never heard it that way, they can quote the scriptures, take that pen, pen and, and pad and write it down and look at it. Hear what the Lord is saying. He's not saying they're going to have eternal life. He says, those who have the Son have that life. Come on now. Huh? And so he said, if you have it now, can you put it to use? So how do you put that to use? Come on. It means that you must, you must, um, what is this? Ephesians 5 verse 1 shows you how you put that life into use. How you put that life into use. Ephesians 5 verse 1 says, be imitators of God. As his dear children. Be what? Now, how can man imitate God? Has God a God? A man or just man? Come on, somebody. But if the life of God is in man, man isn't just man with the life of God in him. Because the life of man is mortal life. But the life of God is eternal life. 
And God has said, I'm giving you this life. I don't hear anybody here, but I'm still declaring it. Because it's the gospel. It's the gospel of God reigning in you and through you. Glory to God. And if you embrace that, then something supernatural starts to happen on the inside of you. Huh? You know that it's bigger than you of what is happening because you know you have found your true identity and purpose in him. Hallelujah. Your life is hid in him. Glory to God. Come on. Hallelujah. So he said anyone who have the son have that life. And God gave the testimony that the son is that life and comes to give you that life. So he didn't come merely as it is preached that he come to just die for our sin. And, it, and so if he die for our sin and, and sin brought death then why are we still dying? You see? If he came to die for a sin, and his sin brought death, correct? Because he said, by one man's sin, death came upon all. And by one man's righteousness, life came upon all. So if the life come to all, why are you still dying? See, you see? It's not merely that he come to say you die for your sin. He come to taste of what you are tasting in this life. To give you of his life. Ah, Jesus. Give you a reference to that. It will be in Hebrews 2. Hebrews 2 would give you some light on that. Probably from verse 10 going down. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's look at that one and give you some idea here. All right. It says, fitting for him for whom are all things and by whom are all things. In bringing what? In bringing what? It's fitting for him in bringing many sons to glory. To make the captain of their salvation perfect. Through what? The captain of our salvation is made perfect through what he suffered. What is those sufferings? Hmm? Of course, being tempted. He suffered being tempted one, and he also suffered tasting of death in the flesh. He could not taste it in the spirit. Watch it. He says, for both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one are all of are all of for what which reason which reason is he talking about because they are they are one because they are both the one who is the sanctifier and the one who's being sanctified is one he says for that reason he's not ashamed he's not ashamed he's not ashamed he's not ashamed to call you brethren. Come on. And he said, I'll declare your name to my brethren. And in the midst of the assembly, I will sing praise to you. Huh? More? Hallelujah. And again, he says, I'll put my trust in him. And again, here I am and the children whom God has given me. And as much then, look at this one. Verse 14 to 15. He says, in as much then as the children have what? What have the children done? They part. Notice, he don't say the children are flesh and blood. He doesn't say the children are flesh and blood. He says, the children have experienced life in that form. He then had to experience it in that form. For them to experience life now in his form. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. 
in as much then as the children what the children have partaken of flesh and blood they have experienced what it is to live in a flesh and blood body he says he himself likewise shared that experience of living in a flesh and blood body that what through death through death how did he experience death through that flesh and blood body that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death that is the devil and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to what to bondage come on somebody what bondage you were subjected to fear of death look at it the verse does say it all their lifetime come on they are subject to fear of death for indeed he does not give aid to angels but he does give aid to who seed of abraham no he gives aid to the seed of Abraham. who is the seed of abraham christ come on therefore in all things he had to be made he had to be made like his brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God and to make propitiation for the sins of the people that in that he himself has suffered being what he suffered there it is verse 18 it says that's what he suffered being tempted for in that he himself has suffered being tempted he is able to aid those who are tempted. Now, the aid those who are tempted is not aiding those who sin. As some suppose it and say it and teach it as he helping you know, kind of we are sinner. That's why him die if we make if we make sin get forgiven. So we sin again, but he didn't know we're going to sin, so he died for sin to be forgiven. No, he says, he came to experience other life in flesh. He says, suffered being tempted is able to help you who are being tempted. No, you know, it's not helping you who are being tempted to sin. It's helping you who are being tempted not to sin. Because he was tempted in all ways without sin come on somebody so he said then he's he's the fit and perfect high priest <sighs> come on now now under the old covenant and the the old religion setting of the jewish faith they 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 their high priest was not perfect even he that was going into the holies of holies once per year and the other the people were not allowed not even the priest was allowed only the high priest come on and he says no it, it, since then even the priest that was allowed once a year himself was offering atonement for his own sin means he too was still sinning then how could that system bring them into perfection before the Lord it couldn't bring them because even the high, highest representation of them is still practicing sin is still bring, making atonement for his sins and for the sins of the people but Christ on the other hand was tempted in all ways without sin and he didn't go into the holies of holies once per year and come out back but went in there and sat down come on somebody and then he's calling us in the brethren we are the brethren that he's calling in to the holies of holies because we are seated in christ in heavenly you hear anything man you hear anything hallelujah come on hallelujah so that, that's why it says he is he is the perfect high priest 
and so perfection couldn't exist under the law because they didn't have perfect representation come on somebody my god yeah they did not perfect representation but he says no under christ you in christ no it is every all is made perfect as it is hebrews 10 verse 14 all is made perfect in him praise god so the, so the, the things here could not make perfect but christ has made things perfect and made the ones who become his virgin perfect in him perfect in him come on the life in him is also in us that is what paul is referring to as the the spirit of christ every year paul said if the spirit of christ dwell in you as romans 8 verse 9 if the spirit of christ dwell in you then you are his and he also used the spirit of christ synonymously with the term the spirit of god in other words he's not just talking about the life of christ the life of christ is the life of god and he says he's imparting that life to you got it look at that he said you are not in the flesh but in the spirit what's the condition if indeed the spirit of god what visits you comes upon you occasionally no he says talking about dwells in you and he says if anyone does not have the spirit of christ and he's talking as the spirit of christ in the same breath as speaking about it as the spirit of god if anyone does not have the spirit of christ dwelling in him he said he is not his in other words he is not god's offspring come on that spirit has to dwell in you has to what so if god didn't give us his kind of life we couldn't imitate him which man can get up and say i can imitate god of myself cannot do it he has to have the same life partake of the life of god in him come on somebody and then we told you there's different kinds of life huh yeah well, there's different kinds of life it's like it says there are different kinds of flesh all flesh are not the same flesh all life is not the same life huh animal life is not the same as human life god made that clear too and god's judgment is following that that principle that the if the judgment was severe when animal blood was shed how much more will it be for his son's blood being shed huh? come on now so we we know there's a priority on human life than for uh, animal lovers don't too like here that one what is what we are we are not against being an animal lover we're just saying the principle is there <laughs> the principle is there in the word and i can show you further in the word that jesus taught that principle too and uh, some people will put high value on animals uh, they, they have harsh punishment for animal cruelty but people can do cruelty to human beings and they say all they need is look at counseling uh, yeah, <laughs> all in, yeah, you know so he, he says yeah it's hebrews 10 verse 28 yes anyone who has rejected moses law he says died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses he says no 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 he says of how much worse punishment do you suppose will be thought worthy who has trampled the son of god underfoot counted the blood 
of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the spirit of grace come on now we already read that blood of goats and calves could not take away sins so it's the blood of jesus that was really representing and now jesus came because he said the body was prepared for me now i'm, I'm i've tasted of being a party of the flesh and blood with the children that they know can be a party of our family as children of god huh so it's a it's bringing us from one stage to another of being is bringing us somewhat one stage to another of being is not just extending the life of the being if he's just extending the life he wouldn't say then you're a new creation you'd be the same old creation that has extended life but he says ah a new creation is saying a new species of being. And you take apart that word that they use there. It says he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold all things. Not some things. If some things have changed. Then he's still just human. With some new things about him. He would still be human being that is just new being a human but it says all things become new it's not some things change about him so he can't say he's just come back as a human again as though he was from the beginning now he said all things so that's why john is saying in first john but first john 3 verse 3 and for i believe he said there that now we are children of god huh now we are children of god come on hallelujah hallelujah all right he said verse three all right let's take it from verse one then behold what man of love the father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of god therefore the world does not know us why does the world does doesn't know us because the world doesn't know him he says look at verse 2 he said beloved now we are children of god it has not yet been revealed what what we shall be no you know it's revealed to us already what human is so it cannot be that we are still going to come back as human. I say, what we, we, it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. If it says new creation, and we know this creation already, what is the new going to be? John is saying, we don't know. You get it? We don't know. And why would he say we don't know? Because he says, he who is God, we in our human form have never seen him in his form. There's no point of reference then for us to say we know how he's going to look. Hallelujah. Because no one ever saw him in his full form. There's some manifestations of him. But so that's why John is saying when he is revealed, he's not revealed, nobody said, when we know that when he is revealed. We shall be like him. He said, We're children of God. No, 
But we don't look like children of God. We look like children of men. We look like human beings. And we, we never see anything more than that. But, but he says, we, we, we are yet to see the true form that we shall bear. Oh, Jesus, come on. When he is revealed, we shall be. Or when they say nobody like you, Lord, I guess they'll have to change that song. Because uh, we shall be like him. Amen. And he says, not only be like him, but he says, we shall see him as he is. In other words, we will see him in his full form. Oh, come on, somebody. You know that you cannot see God in his full form now and live? You, 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 the body you're in cannot withstand that. Hallelujah. We're, we're reading that this morning, you know, teaching from Exodus 33, verse what? 17 to... 17 to what? 17 to 23 or something there. Hallelujah. Yes, 17 to 20. It says, So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken for. You have found grace in my sight and I know you by name. And he said, Please show me your glory. Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you and I will be gracious to you. whom I will be gracious and I will have what? Compassion on whom I will have compassion but he said you cannot see me you cannot see my face for no man shall see me and live Uh, uh oh that statement no man I said that statement no man is talking about human he said you being in human form cannot see God and live Hallelujah. So what the Lord had to do? Put him in a cleft of a rock and cover it there with his hand and walk by and when he's about to totally leave him then he put his hand away and let him see the backside of the glory passing. You know, in other words, you see in God's glory ending from behind. And my God, the man's face is shiny. That people are terrified to look in his face. In other words, the glory that his body picked up from seeing just the fading end of God's glory was shining on his face. In other words, if the full radiance catch the man, Oh, you don't understand this thing. Come on, somebody. And he, he had to be wearing veil over his face for many days for that glory to just fade out. And he saw the fading glory of God. And I was God turning back. Is the back end of God's glory, Moses, you know? You only see it back. And your face they shine. Much more if you see him face to face. Come on, somebody. You hearing me here? Uh, he's, he's, ah, Jesus. And he, he says, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. Moses didn't know. That is. The skin of his face was shining. 
at twenty come before the people and people and running and hiding and he's one then what, what happened to him? <laughs> And he saw that they were terrified. He had to wear a veil over his face until that faded out. Come on, that was the fading glory. Oh, come on, somebody. You're not hearing this word tonight. Huh? That, that was a fading one, man. Come on. Hello. He says, So hearing and all the children of Israel saw Moses. Behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. Come on. And Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him. Eh? Even Aaron was afraid to come to him. Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him. Moses talked with them, and afterwards, Shin of Israel came near, and he gave them as commandments all the Lord had spoken with him. And Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. Hallelujah. He hid the thing. Because it was terrifying them. Just, just the fading of fading part of God's glory that catch on Moses' face. Terrifying them. Much more they say they fully. Oh Jesus. And man had to wear a veil over his face like he's a bride waiting to be wedded. Hiding face <laughs> from the people that he's leading because they are terrified by light beaming out of his face. Come on now, somebody. So where you see if God full range glory show up? You say this body can't manage it. And not at all. Come on. Hello. And, and, and that's all. Oh, Jesus. Come on. You never see God in his full form. If you see him in his full form, or you want to stand up with him now and say, These are the children. In face of him. Come on now. Hello. My God, my God, somebody had have a praise on it, man. Lord of mercy. And I get better praise than a book. Praise God. But God is a good God. I have to understand the thing. So when you embrace the word of God, it must do something to your inside, man. Hallelujah. Praise God. To know, say, God put me on such a plan, man. My God, and say, Richard, that's what they call you in your flesh, you know, but I have a new name for you. Nobody don't know about me. Hallelujah. And he say, when I call, you will know, says you are calling. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. And them think they're there? Yes, man. Praise God. He say, I have a name for you. Praise God. Huh? No one has seen God. John 1 verse 18 says, No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father. He has what? Declared Him, revealed Him, testified of Him. Huh? Praise God. And so He says, We then know the Father through the Son. But then the Son is saying, The time is coming, we will see Him as he is hallelujah glory to god face to face come on now <laughs> glory to god and he said that glory is in the face we see that glory in the face of jesus christ we what we see that glory in the face of jesus christ and it's not a fading glory it is a exceeding glory Ah, huh? Second Corinthians four verse six. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in where our hearts to give the light. Hallelujah! That light. This light is not just is not light like light from above. 
He says, light of the knowledge of the glory. Light of the knowledge of the glory of God. In where? In the face of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. And I tell you, <laughs> it will be awesome to stand in the face of Jesus Christ and see him as he is. He said, in all his glory. Come on, somebody. In all his. Yeah, man, when they were about to crucify him, he was telling them, and I said, you will see the son of man coming in the clouds, man. In all his glory. And he said, then we go and say that time. They go and say, no, it's not him. No, man, you have, have to bow your knee and say, truly, he is Lord. Come on, somebody. Every knee shall bow. And every tongue will confess that he is. God is bringing us into a new species of being, man. Hallelujah. And he said, the world has not seen that yet. I said, the world don't know him. So the world don't know us. Huh? But who we are in him is yet to be unveiled. Huh? Praise God. That's why Paul said, but we are, we are groaning in our inner man. Oh, glory to God. It says we are, we are groaning with us, waiting for that expectancy. All creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. Huh? The manifestation. My God, you don't see the manifestation yet. Uh, this, is, this is just early glimpse, man. Come on. But the fullness is yet to come. Come on. Romans 8, uh, verse 20 to 22 says, For the creation was subject to futility, not willingly because of him who subjected in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption that's decay and death into what the glorious liberty of who the children of god for we know that the whole creation groans and labors with burnt pangs together until now come on give me some more there Praise God. And he says, not only that, but we also who have the what? That's, that's also speaking about the life of God in us. That's also talking about, they say, first fruit of the Spirit. He says, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting. And what we are waiting on? this body to be transformed we're not keeping this body hallelujah come on and it's this body that makes us human watch the thing he says eagerly waiting for the adoption the redemption of our body for we were saved in this hope but hope that is seen is not hope and say, if, if it is this body we're getting back, but we're getting a more stronger form of this body, then he said, we see it already, you know. We just know it's going to be stronger this time. He said, no, it's not seen. Hope that is seen is not hope. For he says, for why does one still hope for what he already see? Watch the thing. It says, but if we hope for what we what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. We press through what we suffer with this one for the one that's coming. Hallelujah! Praise God. Huh? As Second Corinthians five verse one to five. He's telling, Paul is also speaking about that body. He speaks of this body as an earthly tent and speaks of that body as a building from God, a host, 
that may be hands eternal in heavens. He's talking about the body right there. He says, we know if our earthly house, this tent, speaking about this body, is destroyed, we have a building from God. So he said, this body is not it, because he refers to this body as a tent. But he said, we have a building, a permanent one, from God. A house not made with hands, eternal in heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly designed to be what? Clothed. In other words, we want that body. With the life that we have inside this earthly tent, we need a body that suits the life we have. Oh my God. Come on, somebody. So he says, it's not die we want to die. This is what he's saying here. It's not that we want to be, we, 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 we are trying to, to not be clothed, to be unclothed. He said, no, but we want to be further clothed. Look at this, he says, he says, we groan earth's desire to be clothed with habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found what? Naked. Give me some more verse there to show you that. We shall not be found naked for we who are in this tent grown, being burdened. We who are in this tent, we are not the tent we are in. But we are in this tent and we groan. The beings we are in this body that we are now carrying is not suiting the body we carry in. That's why we groan in. For the one that suited. Watch this. He says, not, want, not because we want to be unclothed. In other words, it's not die we want to die. But further clothed. Into one that is more secure. And appropriate for the life. That we have inside. That mortality. Mortality is what man is, you know. Maybe he's swallowed up by life that life there is eternal life now he who has prepared us for this thing is god who also has what given us the spirit so he said he poured off his spirit in us as a guarantee for the fullness of us coming into the being as his children Because his spirit cannot malfunction. Eh? And so this is the key where, with the scripture where the Lord said to the Jews that, that they shall be my people. I, because he says, I will put my spirit in them. If his spirit is not in us, how do we perform like him? We cannot do it. But if his spirit is in us, he can perform. Who can perform like God, like God? Huh? So his spirit being in us is the guarantee of that life being expressed through us. Got it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I tell you, if you believe the testimony of God, something supernatural is going to happen in you every day. Hallelujah. And you can declare like Paul, though the outward man perish, the inward man or the inner being is being renewed from glory to glory. Hallelujah. The glory is increasing because you're feeding on the word and the word of God is eternal life. It's called the word of life. You feed off that word. You are feeding off the life of God. And everything that is coded in the word. In God's word to do. Will be accomplished in you. Because God's word cannot return to him void. It must accomplish. What he's saying it for to do. So that takes the stress off you. Trying to be like God. That's when, that's when you leave out a religion, you know. When you stop trying to be like God, and you just allow God to be God in you. Ah, Jesus. 
you are just you are just being a facilitator you are just standing back and just allowing him to express himself huh through you and that takes a, a whole lot of sweat and struggle from trying to be like somebody you are not to being a partaker of their life hallelujah glory to god both the one who justifies and the one who is being justified are all one hallelujah and he wants you to experience that daily or you say somebody so we god call us to go into that and it's not easy regarding to people who want to hold on to the old and say so we just all we got going to want to just, just to try do your best give your best effort but the lord know our best effort is flawed messed up poor is a poor reflection of him and it doesn't bring him glory come on that's why he said i will pour my spirit in them and i'll write my law upon their heart i will be their god and they'll be my people i will become as a father to them and they're my children huh so it's real what god is releasing to is of himself hallelujah and he will still be god hallelujah and we embrace that then the life of god is revealed in us huh praise god hallelujah are you getting anything out of this praise god so the purpose of the parable is really about the the the, the lord disguising certain truths they are not plainly shown shown in all aspects of it to those who are not truly showing true interest for it but those who have an appetite and a desire for this thing the lord will pour more into you man, and more into you and more into you because the the, 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 the craving and desire for god's holiness increases more you know those who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled ah huh? yes so you have to know to gravitate to the word of the kingdom and understand it's training god training you to work with him in his kingdom hallelujah as because it calls you ears of god and join ears with with christ so you say if you have a share in this thing you have to know to run it good with the one who appointed you you can come there and do him guesswork and he says this call for a certain character to be formed in you that you don't go off on your own tangent and start doing your own thing you know that's what adam did <laughs> hello but he says with his spirit now dwelling in you and his word remaining in you now that you are sealed to continually perform in the way that pleases him and with what brings him glory huh praise god all right any questions and comments i don't know give you a chance to show it your questions praise and, check and uh, comments praise god both those who are here and those who are online you can post your questions or your comments we'll be taking on time as we have here to read them so don't wait until you feel like doing it because we have short span of time to deal with it but we trying to get to them as quickly as possible so each person can get good amount of food out of this thing praise god hallelujah all right your time praise god hallelujah bless god good night everyone praise god just a little uh one of my jotting with whoever has the has the hidden truth more will be given to them which mm -hmm. is the mystery of the kingdom when when i was taught earlier i didn't think it was the hidden truth mm -hmm. we were taught it was riches and 
material things and mm -hmm. so this really taught me tonight that no that's not it so i am mm. grateful yes man the word of god even speaks about those who are poor but rich in faith hallelujah you see it because the world doesn't value faith as greater than material wealth you know some persons they had jump for material wealth uh, and if they have material wealth it's like they have everything they need but those who know the value of faith and the value of truly living a life pleasing to god knows that god doesn't value or measure your life based on the amount of material possessions you have come on somebody and, and, and that is what Jesus taught his disciples, that a man life huh, does not consist of the abundance of things that one possess. And he's still saying that now. And many still don't get it because they have already taken different course, you know, a view on the whole thing that caused them now to be entangled in some things that caused them to see it differently now. Mm-hmm. But you got to understand it's not about the amount of position of things you have. It has to do with the, the, the values you place on the things of God. Hello, somebody. The value you place on the things of God. And I tell you that it's more than about acquiring things and, and material goods and gains and money. It has to do with your heart position before the Lord. And about your whole passion and zeal to accomplish the way his will in your life. Hallelujah. Come on now. Hallelujah. That's where it says, Luke 12, verse 15. Said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. And that is often the cause that some people start to twist the message to make it sound like it's the material goods, is their blessing because they want. You to bring more material goods, can't give them. It's covetousness. <laughs> he said, but he said, for he says, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of things that one possesses. It has to do with the one who you're believing in and your obedience to do his will. That's what entitles you to have now everything. What you are willing to give up to please him shows the wealth you have in him. As I was saying to the rich young ruler, give all this up, said it and give for, and you will have treasures in heaven. Then come and follow me. Come on. And say, man, you'll receive a hundred times more. When you never wait for that part where you say, you'll receive a hundred times more in this life, in this time. Never wait to hear that. Because he trusted his possessions more than trusting the one who could give him that life. He was asking about eternal life. His possessions couldn't give it to him. He's asking the teacher, what should I do to inherit it? The teacher is telling him what to do and he's saying, eh, eh. It's not all that. So if he had really valued the word from the king, he would value the kingdom, you know. And he'd be willing to give up everything to get it. And those who, so that's how Peter was able to say to him, say, Lord, we have left all to follow you. Because they did that. And that's why the Lord could say to them, no, anyone who have done this shall receive a hundred times in this time. See? A hundredfold in this life. And in the life to come eternal life. So you see, the, the, there is more to come for such a one. Anyone have the a little you will have more and in abundance but those who don't have even the little that they have will be taken away from them come on hello praise god anyone else good word praise god hallelujah um good night everyone praise god apostle i want to thank you again for the word hallelujah um on my way to church, um, you know, we started uh, this conversation, me and the driver. And, uh, of course, I was telling him that Christ is not coming back for religion. No. Because he's not a religious person. 
That's right. And he was saying, really? Somebody said, no, so I don't, I don't talk about religion. He said, I preach Christ. And he said, you're a Christian? I said, I'm a child of God. <laughs> and, you know, he was saying so many things that it reached the point. And he said, you're married? I said, no, I'm not married, but I'm a child of God. And he said, maybe I, I think you guys need to see a psychiatrist now because I, I don't know how you can live without that thing. I said, it's a sacrifice. I said, if you really love God, and if you want to know him, you will know him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, apostle, it reached the stage that I, I have to ask him, are you really serious about what you're saying? Are you just being sarcastic? And he said, I'm serious. I said, no. And the reason why I asked him, apostle, is not the first time I've traveled with him. And I heard he uttered some things. And I said, but... So I asked him, I said, you don't go to church anymore? Because I know you used to go to Seventh-day Adventist mm. church. Because the whole family oh, is a Seventh-day Adventist. And so he's telling me that he yeah. traveled the world and is only in the Caribbean. You see, where, where people dwell in religion that much. And I said, no, because you have to understand that people have culture. And, and, and they, 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 when they come onto their culture, I mean, nobody like them. You understand? But I said, we in the Caribbean, I, I, I know, I said, I've not traveled the world, so I can't speak about the world. But what I understand, and I told him, I said, so many times I went to the U.S. and they're saying that. You're not saying, and I said, no. Because I put my, and, and I said, if anybody wants to go, and I speak to the person, I said, if you want to go and live there, well, fine. But, Apostle, I can testify tonight that God don't make mistakes. <laughs> and, and, and I tell them because I said, I've been there several times and I, I've pictured my life. And I said, if, I'm, if I was living there, I don't think I would know Christ. And, and I'm saying because of my experience. I said, I've been there and it's all about go get it, get it, get it. And, and <laughs> within getting it, you, you're going to lose the sight of, of getting to know Jesus Christ. You, you have to have this background or this family to really back you up, to, 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 to introduce you or to help you, I mean, to, to know and to have that push to, to walk like Christ or to serve him. Apostle, and, and this is what I told others on a daily basis. And, and so sometimes they said, well, that's my opinion. Yes, I said, because I've been there, I, I've seen things. You understand? Mm -hmm. And when I reflect, I say, God, thank you. Because if I've been there, maybe I will get caught up with so many other things. Mm. And, and, and it's really a blessing, Apostle. And, yeah. and the, as I said, I learn. Every day I learn something new. Yes. And, and, you know, it always gets me excited. And, and when, I, when I'm ministering to others, I don't have to be shy. I, and, and I remember he asked me this question. He said, so, if you're not married, when was the last time you have sex? I said, eight, nine years ago. I said, I'm not ashamed about it because this is something that I, I made this sacrifice because I know if you are a child of God, you must mm -hmm. be perfect. And somebody was saying, but you can't be perfect. I said, as a child of God, you right. must be perfect. <laughs> they will know that until they are, we see the, the word of God say the world does not know us because it doesn't know him and they they have to know they can't know him without christ and how then you say who can a person live without doing that when christ lived that without doing that paul lived here without doing that right so i mean and paul write two-thirds of the new testament and he was not married and right? so I mean, they, they are just missing the point because all they think, they think life sums up all about that. And life is more than about that. Jesus, in fact, taught on that. Jesus says, the body is, is more than having raiment and more than food. He said, the body is for the Lord. The body is for the Lord. And many don't take that seriously. They... They, they still will say that, but they say, mm -hmm, but, and you know what's coming. Right, so they, they, they are not anyway deterred from their position, and they know what they're going to do. 
to get it and you know that's where the word of god says they they, they, they are three things in this world the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of life lust of the eyes lust of the flesh and pride of life you have this constant desire for things that they feel for things that they see and things that they possess lust of the eyes lust of the flesh pride of life he said these things are not of the father huh not of the father the world it is of the world he said the world is passed away and the lust of it but he who what does the will of God abides forever. Hallelujah. That's a good position to be, man. And say, oh, you're going to abide forever if you don't live forever. And you're going to live forever without eternal life in Christ. Where will you spend that forever? Hallelujah. So we, that's why we want them to know. But not everybody wants to know. So you say it, you still have to leave them with it like a parable for them to figure it out or come back and question because those who really wanted to be disciples would question Jesus. What does the parable mean and try to understand it? While others would criticize what he said and left it alone. That's why it didn't bear any fruit in their life. Huh? Praise God. So we know the truth is there. Person who want to know the truth, they must know the, as Jesus says, the word of God is truth. He prayed in John 17, verse 17, sanctify them by your truth, for thy word is truth. So it's the word that sanctifies us. And he said it also in, in what is that? Ephesians 5, I think verse 27. He says there that Christ loved the church and he washed her. By the water of word, he washes her and presents her a glorious church. Huh? Presents her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkles. 26 and 27. Hallelujah. Right. 25 to 27. Right. So it says he gave himself. That first 27 says he's, he sanctified and cleansed her with the washing of water by the word. Is the word he used to set us apart from the world. The world does not receive the word of God. That's what sets us apart from them. Sanctifies us and cleanses us. And he says that he might present us to himself. A glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But she should be holy. And without blemish. Hallelujah. Come on somebody. And that is a good report. All who want to run down with blemish. Say them right down man. Ah, praise God. See and get all this blemish till you look like a leopard. Ah, hallelujah. Praise God. But you must know who you are serving. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it's with all those that scoff and mock at those who serving the Lord they, they, they always have a saying that is not who laugh first <laughs> it's who laugh last and there's a last laugh coming and as far as I read in the book no one in hell not laughing they don't get no joke there they're just weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth hallelujah so you'll be among the sheep and not among the goats as the Lord says, you know we're going to put those. Hallelujah. So let your life be counted as one for Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Any more? Any comments or questions online? Hallelujah. Okay, they're quiet over there. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. But it's good to know the Lord and I'm, I'm rejoicing in knowing him. And still knowing him more and more and more and more. Hallelujah. I'm enjoying my journey with the Lord. Hallelujah. And it's getting better. Sweeter as the days go by. 
and I'm rejoicing in him night and day. Hallelujah. It's a good place to be in the Lord. In no better place. And I tell you, you can't abide any man's word abide in you and it doesn't bring forth a difference. Huh? And one that will know that this is of God and not of myself. Huh? Because it's God doing that work in you. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, great it is, man, who wake up and just hear songs playing in your spirit. And anytime you think about anything, you, you're hearing God unsigned you and reminding you of some scriptures. And you and him having a conversation, nobody not even see you. They say, hey. Then one day you just sit down to yourself and I say, no, you're not bored. You're not, no, me, me well, all right. Praise God. Hallelujah. In fact, I enjoy those moments. I don't like nobody disturbing me too much. Because I'm enjoying it, man. Praise God. But they would say they're lonely and they're bored. And they got to run and go do something. And they have to go see some sure or go some place or go some party or drink something and dine or mash something. Then they say, yes. We've done something for the night. But what, what I'm sweetly safe. Praise God. Hallelujah. But I'm glad that the Lord saved me from all of my sins. None remaining. Hallelujah. Wash me whiter than snow. Hallelujah. Remove every stain of sin from my life. And fill me with joy within peace. Of God that passed all understanding. And it's good to be in the Lord, man. I say good, don't even begin to describe it. But yeah, everybody know. Yeah. Good is good. Hallelujah. And God is good. Ha ha ha. Hallelujah. So he did a work on me, man. And I tell you, I'm not going back to mess it up again, but he can continue to do the work. No. I'm, I'm keeping my garments spotless. Hallelujah. That's what he said. These are they who have been through tribulation. I've had their garments washed in the blood of the Lamb. I've kept their self. Oh my God. From this filthy and curved world. Kept themselves clean. Huh? Hallelujah. You're not glad for that? Uh, you're not glad for it, boy. I can tell you that. Hallelujah. God is doing it and I believe he's still. And there's much more to be done. We avail ourselves to him and allow him to take full charge. We can't we bring everybody where we're going. But my God. we will be glad if everybody could come. But we know... <laughs> Hallelujah. Not everybody is desirous about this. Hallelujah. And sometimes you've got to learn how to walk alone. And God put you in a family where you can have this structure around you to support your feet and support your walk in the Lord. Huh? And you stick with him and he will bring you places. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Yeah, man, I'm enjoying this walk. I'm enjoying this life in Christ. It's not a religion. It's a life. Hallelujah. He tasted of my life that I could now relish into his life in me. Hallelujah. Life of God in me. Hallelujah. And that's a holy life. Righteous life. Pure life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm not lacking. I'm not in kind or coveting or envying those out there so they're living up. They can get all the up, they're getting up. Because I know that up I've had down. Uh, but this up that I have in the Lord is not down and up. It's just up, up, up. Uh, 
And when they go and look for me, I'm up and away. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah, man. Because who can bring you up more like the most high? Hallelujah. Praise God. It's good to trust in him and love him and take him at his word. Many don't value this word. That's why I've seen many of them drifting away. They don't put prior priority on this word. <coughs> Sorry. They don't put priority on this word. Eh? Hallelujah. They put a priority on other things. And they make great deal of sacrifice and effort to accomplish those things. But you see the word. Yeah, man, that to treat like some appetizer or side dish. It's not a main menu for them. But it is a main menu for me. And it is working for me. Hallelujah. And if it never working for me, God wouldn't send you to me. If you me teach you, it can work for you too. Praise God. So that's how it works. So the person has to put priority on the word. Hallelujah. You blessed tonight? Come on, stand on your feet. We're going to pray. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you release this anointing. God's word comes with power. It's not with hallelujah. Glory Shamasa. It's not about feelings. Hallelujah. And emotions. But the power of God. The power of God. Is able to demolish, uproot, plunder, shut down the gates of hell. And release power to you to overcome that wicked one. To rise to new heights of prominence in the Lord. For the Lord said even the foolish things of this world he will use to take down those who are wise. And the, and the weak things to take down those who of the world will be considered as mighty. He will use those that are despised. Hallelujah. Rejected. And treated as nothing of this world. To take down those who declare they are great. But God will use his, his people to reveal his greatness in them. Come on somebody. That power is flowing right now. That life is in you. If the spirit of Christ dwells in you. Then that life is available to you. You have access to that life. Come on somebody. And that life is flowing. He said if anyone believe in him. He says out of his belly. Shall flow. Rivers. Of living waters. He, he, he spring up unto eternal life. And my God, everywhere that water touch cause life to spring up. Life to spring up. Life to spring up. Life to spring up. Life to shoshe masse to rush in the life I say to shemasa to spring up. From within, no shema. Because we have a life the world don't know about. We're not here to seek approval from the world. The world can't teach us about this life. We must teach them about it. Because we are the bearers of that life. Hallelujah. For God has commanded the light to shine out of darkness. And His light has shone in our hearts. Hallelujah. And that life expel every darkness. It expels sin. It expel every bondage. Every corruption. It expel. My God, every sickness and disease. Hallelujah. It expel. Everything the enemy has placed to dry up your life. God is declaring life and prosperity over you right now. In the name of Jesus, we bind every sickness and disease. We bind Mark Oshima. Even those the doctor said it is incurable. Ashoshama. 
there is no sickness that is incurable to your father you are the great healer our great physician hallelujah and every sickness must bow to your name it have a name and it is subjected to the name of Jesus Christ ha ha and it must bow it don't have no resistance against your name for you have exalted your name above everything named in this age and even in the age to come hallelujah hallelujah we command healing healing is your children's bread and we command healing 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 in jesus name you command healing in their bodies healing the minds healing in the flesh healing in the spirit healing for their soul healing yes lord you know to make whole the places that have been broken the places that have been inflamed places that have been hurt by the wicked one you are able to restore because all things are made by your word and for your word reveal your glory now let healing be released even those who are not children of God can receive of your healing. For you, the woman said, even the crumbs that fall from the master's table, the little dogs do eat. Hallelujah. And you release healing. For there's an abundance in the house that even those outside can get. It. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody receive your healing. Receive grace from the Lord. His grace is sufficient. Even in your weakness, His strength is perfect. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, hey. Somebody give God the praise in you. Hallelujah! 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 Glory to God. We claim the victory over you and your household. That God will manifest His power in you. To take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it around to make a message out of this mess that will be for the glory of God. Magnify your name, Father. Reveal your power once more. Hallelujah. Unleash your power against all the forces of hell. For they will not prevail against your church. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody praise him in here. Worship the Lord your God. Raise up a praise to him. Come on, come on, open your mouth. Open your spirit to him. Open your hearts to him. Let him have his way. Hebo Shamasa. Thank you, Lord. Hebo Shama. Reign, oh God. Reign your grace and favor. Unveil your glory over their lives in the name of Jesus. For your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you Roshabasitu. hallelujah thank you lord thank you father come on somebody praise him 
<laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Don't shame us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. He's awesome. Hey, hey, Great are you, Lord. <laughs> Great are you, Lord. <laughs> Great are you, Lord. 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 Oh, so great. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you. Come on, raise your voice and say to him, Great are you, Lord. Yes, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Come on, say, Great are you, Lord. 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 Come on, say it one more time. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. And you're worthy to be praised. Great are you, Lord. Great are you. Hallelujah. You're great, God. You're great, Jesus. You're great, Father. You're greatly to be praised. Greatly to be praised. Greatly to be praised. Greatly to be praised, God. Hallelujah. Great are you. Everything you do is well done. Hallelujah. Thank you for your greatness. For unveiling your greatness to us. And revealing it in us. And we can say, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Thank you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. From beginning to end. Great are you, Lord. 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 Oh, Shemana Masi. Great are you, Lord. Oh, Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Hoshima. Yes, God, you're great, you're great, you're great. Great are you, Lord. Oh, yes. Oh, Lord. Great are you. Yes, God. From beginning to the end. Greater, oh my God, greater you, Lord, greater you, Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, come on, worship him, great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised, oh God. 
everything you do is well done, oh God. I Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him one more time in the house. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated for a minute. We're going to release you. Give you a chance to show as the Lord has laid upon your hearts. While I talk to those who are watching us online. Praise God. Go ahead and show as the Lord has laid in your heart. Praise God. Those who are watching online, you're watching Increase in Faith Deliverance Ministry International. We are at 3 East Street, Montego Bay, Jamaica. I'm Apostle Richard Fagan declaring the gospel of Christ and his kingdom. We have a lot of cleaning up to do in regards to a lot of teachings that are out there. Um, that is putting people in a comfortable position in their sinful lifestyle. But we want to tell you it's not satisfactory to God then and it's still not satisfactory to God now. But he wants to make it right and he's made that offering by one sacrifice through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He's declaring that you can be made perfect in him and he wants to pour his spirit in you. To walk that life. To walk and to live that life. That is in Christ Jesus. If any man have the, not the spirit of Christ. He said it's none of his. It's not no showboating and playing around and pretending. It's something that you need to know of a truth. That the spirit bears witness with your spirit. That you are indeed a child of God. It's not something you're trying to tell yourself to feel comfortable. Or something that his Holy Spirit is bearing witness within you. It is so. And I'm telling you, press to the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Get your heart lined up with the word and allow the word to abide in you. And it will bear fruit. And much fruit and fruit that remain. It won't be something you only wish about, but it will bear the expected results that God declared it will. That's the, exactly what the word will do. And all he asks for you to do is to have faith in him and his word. And if you do have faith, you will have corresponding actions. That we are testimony that that faith is truly active and dear in you to produce and unleash the power of the life of God in you even now. Praise God. And so we don't want you to just sit on the fence about it, but put that word to work. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And I'm praying for you to get this word and to understand it. Hallelujah. And that indeed it will bear much fruit in your life. And fruit that remains. Praise God. And so if you want to know more about this ministry, you can check out our website. It's increasingfaithintl.org. That's increasingfaithintl.org. You can of course, sow to us your love gift. Many have been asked, and how are you going to sow your love gift or offering? You can sow it through the website. Go on the website front page. You will, of course, see all the ways in which you can do so. Information is all there. If you want to see the us when you go live stream, you just send a friend's request to Richard Fagan on Facebook. You'll be plugged into the live stream every time you go live. We have about four or five services that stream every week. So you want to connect with the word. Hallelujah. And get that faith build, built up in the Lord. Hallelujah. You can also see the recordings on our YouTube channel. Look for Richard B. Fagan and subscribe. You'll be plugged into the recordings there. Or you can also, of course, still see it on the website. Hallelujah. We're praying for you to not just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. Because that's where the Father gets the glory. Those that does his will. It's not those who desire to is those that are those that wish they would are those that have the intention to is those that do it and so it's calling for you to put that faith into action hallelujah that will give glory to god amen praise god so we're praying for you in that 
If you have any further questions, you can of course call me, Richard Fagan, at 876-839-9390 or 876-557-2427. Remember, we have that book out there. It's giving the basic platform teaching of what we teach here called the Gospel of the Kingdom, the Gospel that Jesus preached. You can, of course, type in on Amazon.com, Richard V. Fagan, and a book will pop up, and you can, of course, get your copy, hard copy through Amazon.com, or you can get it through the Kindle, how you have an electronic um, version of it to your device, how you that you can read it at your own in convenience, of course, and anywhere you can hand it to carry on your device to any place. Praise God. And so we want you to know if those who need proximity here can also order it from me. We still have copies here also that you can order it from me. So I'm praying for you to grow in your faith and I'm putting out things out there to also help you. Hallelujah. To create that, that platform, that foundational base for you to grow your faith on in Christ. Praise God. And we believe in for your success in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You're blessed tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a praise. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you. Have a great night in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you all.